The Storyteller, Golden Girls, and Facts of Life tomorrow, Sunday, February 1st, from 4.30 to 6 p.m. The following is a special live presentation of WECT Sports, your leader in local sports coverage. For the first time in the history of Trask Coliseum on the campus of the University of North Carolina at Wilmington, students had to camp out to get their tickets for a basketball game. The reason may be the showdown between two of the country's best big men. For Navy, the All-American, 7'1", David Robinson, the midshipman's all-time scorer and a leading candidate for the National Player of the Year. For the UNCW Seahawks, it's their senior center, Brian Rousen, who set most of the school's scoring and rebounding records. And despite playing in Robinson's shadow, may be a legitimate first-round draft pick in the NBA. It's Seahawk basketball, a Colonial Athletic Association contest between the midshipmen of the U.S. Naval Academy and the Seahawks of UNC Wilmington. Trask Coliseum where for only the second time in the 10-year history of this building there is a sellout to watch UNCW basketball. Hello everybody I'm Bill Widiak along with Wayne Jackson the Dean of Area Sportscasters. Wayne have you ever seen this much excitement? Bill in 32 years I never have. I tell you what take a break right now and we're gonna wait for the color guard to present our national anthem. The excitement is such that they've already done the national anthem a little bit or too early. However, this crowd is about ready to explode. That they are, Bill. 32 years in Wilmington, there's never been anything like this. Tonight, we have two great players, two outstanding teams, and a must win for the Seahawks. If they don't win, they don't have a chance for the regular season title. We alluded earlier to the two big men in this ball game for each team. Right now, we're going to have to take a, a look at the starting lineups. And a guard for the Seahawks, a six-foot senior from Muncie, Indiana, number 12, Rob Wagner. And a guard for Navy, a six-foot-four junior from Elliott City, Maryland, number 44, Cliff Reese. A guard for the Seahawks, a six foot two senior from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, number 22, Sandy Anderson. At center for Navy, a seven foot one senior from Woodbridge, Virginia, number 50, David Robinson. For the Seahawks, at center, a six foot nine senior from Columbia, North Carolina, number 25, Brian Rousom. At forward for Navy, a six foot seven senior from Floyd's Knobs, Indiana, number 40, Carl Liebert. 
for the Seahawks at forward, a six foot six sophomore from Fremont, Ohio, number 33, Greg Bender. At forward for Navy, a six foot seven sophomore from Burke, Virginia, number 24, Derek Turner. For the Seahawks, at forward, a six foot seven senior from Taylorsville, Mississippi, number 32, Ben Pittman. Navy's head coach, Pete Herman, Seahawks head coach, Robert McPherson. The teams are taking the court right now, live from Crash Coliseum. Okay. They're right now, they're cautioning the crowd not to throw anything on the court. The students have been out here since about 6 o'clock tonight, piling in, and it is a real walkish crowd. Wayne, they can't hold anybody back in this situation. The lineup's got out, out early. Everything's taking at a faster pace than we had first thought. This place is ready to go crazy, and should UNCW get an early lead, I don't know, they may have to play the national anthem again to get everybody quiet for a second. Well, Coach McPherson is looking for the Seahawks, hopefully, to jump out, hit their first couple shots, gain a little confidence, and then take the ball to Robinson. We'll see what happens. There you see the key right in the middle of big guy, 50 Robinson. Against Ryan Rouse and now the jumping center will be Ben Pittman, a little bit better leaper, a little quicker off his feet. A little psychology going on early in this ball game by Coach Robert McPherson. Watching Robinson uh, this afternoon, early this afternoon, just warming up. He is so agile, so smooth. And Pittman got the pass. Psychology works. Tip controlled by Robinson to Anderson. With the jump shot, USCW with a 2 nothing lead. Sandy Anderson off the glass, important for him to shoot good. He gets the first two points, 2-0 two UNCW. Carl Liebert, they're going to need him to shoot outside. Rebounds off. Turner picks it up, crashes in. Robinson tips it. Finally, Carl Liebert gets it down. Driving inside is Wojcik. Now Navy will set it back up. You notice they run their offense on the left side. That's because Robinson and Wojcik are left-handed. Now there they let Robinson get in the lane, and that's what Coach McPherson said they couldn't do. They try to force him to the baseline. If he gets in the middle, he fills it up. USCW's turn. Score tied at two in the early first minute of the ball game. Navy coming out in the man-to-man. -man. A little surprise. We thought 90% of this ball game they'd be in the zone and start that way. But right now, they think they match up pretty good with Robinson and Rouse from going head-to-head -head in the paint. Bender drives, guarded by Liebert, puts up the shot. Wagner there for the rebound, hurries the shot back up. Robinson clears it. Now here goes Navy on that break, and that's what Coach McPherson worried about. Derek Turner did not play very well earlier in the year, but on that instance, he got down to lead the fast break. Wojcik got him the ball in the position to score, and he put it in. 4-2 in favor of Navy. Here's a key matchup, Wagner and Wojcik, the two point guards. And Wagner's got to be able to control it. Ball knocked away. Wojcik on the drive. Blocked by Pittman. They're going to call that an offensive foul against Doug Wojcik. His first, team's first. Coach McPherson was off the bench there. He was really hollering at his Seahawks. They did something he didn't want them to do. Good job, though, by Greg Bender to get back and draw the charge. Navy staying in that man-to-man -man defense uh, all week long. Coach McPherson talked about their 2-3 zone. A little psychology on the part of Pete Herman and his club to come out in that man-to-man. -man. Anderson misses from the top of the key. Navy kicks it around. Reese finally comes up with it. And the Seahawks are not rebounding offensively, and this is something that uh, they needed to do. They needed to crash the boards and get some extra shots. Robinson in the middle once again. That's time turning against Ben Pittman. You cannot let him get the ball in the paint. That is money in the back. Four points for David Robinson. 
In the first game at Annapolis early in the year, Robinson got only 12 points. Bender tries to lob inside. David Robinson leads his Navy team in steals, and he shows you why right there. Baseline is Liebert. Foul is called. Referee Jerry Stone calling Greg Bender with his first personal foul. Carl Liebert will go to line shoot two. There was a question before the game that uh, Coach Herman might start a freshman, Hopkins, in place of Liebert and bring Liebert off the bench. Liebert uh, took over for Vernon Butler, their strong forward last year, who did such a good job of rebounding and scoring. Liebert averaging uh, eight rebounds a game. Made his first 7-2. He's good on both of them. 58% foul shooter, but he gets both of them there. 8-2, UNCW trails with the ball. Wagner setting up the offense. Navy staying in that man-to-man -man defense. Anderson over to Bender. Rousen finally getting the ball on offense. That's no position to do anything with it there. Anderson looking to get the ball inside. Knocked again, away again by David Robinson. However, double dribble being called. And those long arms of Robinson, he just reaches around, taps the ball away. It's also his athletic ability. You know, he was six foot seven before he was ever seven foot one. And he was a pretty good uh, athletic individual, and he still is. And that's one of the reasons he leads this team in steal. It's hard to believe also that uh, Robinson only played one year of high school ball. UNCW working against the man-to-man, -man, bringing Bender out front. Wagner, they're giving him room to shoot. He takes it from three-point round. Off the glass, battled around. Knocked out of bounds. They say it goes to UNCW. Well, there's Carl Reese made a judgment decision. Uh, he let the ball go out of bounds, thought it was going to be Navy's, and they gave it to the Seahawks. If you can catch it and there's no clear view, you should always grab that basketball. Wagner working against Wojcik, gets it off to Bender. Rousen playing the high post, taking it in against Robinson, head fake. Ryan Rousen with this first bucket of the game makes it That'll easy. do a lot of good for Rousen's confidence because last year, right here in class, Robinson blocked 14 at Robinson's side. Wojcik taking the ball, top of the key. They get the ball on the low. To David Robinson. They have 45 points Sunday against uh, Kentucky. He said it wasn't his best game because maybe he lost. In the corner it goes. They're working it into Rob to Rousen. Turns around. Carl Lieber right there to take it out of his hand. Looks for a foul. No foul call. Fast breaking and will be the midshipman. Cross court. Derek Turner finally gets a handle on the ball. Robinson top of the key. He's deadly from there. He possesses a nice soft touch on the jumper. Man to man for the Seahawks. Ben Pittman against the All-American David Robinson. Gets him to turn baseline foul call. Referee Duke Edsel says that Brian check that uh, Ben Pittman got him with the body. David Robinson will be shooting too. Six points already for the Virginia senior, averaging 29.6 a game. You know, the knock on him was that he wasn't able to hit the free throw. The last couple of ball games, he's turned that around. I don't think there's anything this young man can do. He's just a superb. UNCW will try to make David Robinson play as much as possible. You notice that Brian Rousen took it right down to him when he scored that bucket with a couple of head fakes and was successful. Navy has been extremely active in their defense. Now they're in that 2-3. Playing Robinson on the weak side. Now when the Seahawks have got to get some perimeter shooting, some outside shooting, uh, maybe open it up then for Rousen inside. What they want to try to do is reverse the ball. They do that with a cross-court pass there. The Liebert cuts off Anderson. Outside to Wagner. Seven seconds on the shot clock. They Bender and Anderson are the two outside timeout on the floor. So with the score, Navy 18, UNCW 8. We'll be back right after these messages. When it's freezing outside, come into the Tot Shop and warm up with terrific savings on clothes for your tot. Now at the Tot Shop, you'll save 40% off all fall and winter clothing, 40% off the latest children's fall and winter fashions, 
but cold weather can't last forever. So come to the Tot Shop for spring styles, too. The Tot Shop, for boys and girls, infants at size 14. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, Sundays 1 to 6. 90 down. 190 a month continues till this Sunday only. Atlantic Marine featuring 1987 Johnson Outboards continues their incredible savings on all well crafts. Save over $2,000 on this 18-foot well craft classic and pay as little as 190 down, 190 a month with no payment till March. Yes, the incredible boat show savings and this Sunday at Atlantic Marine, your Johnson Outboards dealer at Wrightsville Beach at Bradley Creek. Take a look around you and you'll see us. We're Ray Sound Building Corporation, and for the past 20 years, we've provided Wilmington with cost-efficient buildings, serving a variety of needs. A Ray Sand building is energy efficient, with flexible design plans allowing aesthetic and structural freedom. And a Ray Sand building is ready for use in a matter of weeks, thanks to computer-designed and pre-engineered components. No job is too large or too small for Ray Sand, for industrial, warehouse, retail, even residential needs. Call us. We're Ray Sand Building Corporation. Back at, back at Trask Coliseum, uh, when you talked about it being physical underneath, here, take a look. There's the last one. Greg Bender taking the uh, charge on that one. It looks like on the replay he might have had his feet set. And that's the one that Turner objected to greatly. Changing the lineup for the Seahawks, Kevin Miles now off the bench. Sandy Anderson still running the point. Mark Gary looking inside, trying to get the entry pass into Rousen. Anderson for two. They say that was two, Sandy Anderson. With his fourth point, now 18-10, lead cut down to eight. Pressure in the backcourt by the Seahawks. Had Turner trapped, but he gets it away to Reese Olochik. And they'll set it back up. You wonder for the Hawks if you might see Ricky Griffin. Griffin had a great game up at Annapolis with nine points. Byron Hopkins with a shot, gets his own rebound. Caught in the middle, they say. Is another one of those young men that started out at the legal height of six foot eight and grew into a six nine frame after signing with the Naval Academy. It must yeah. be the food up there. Must be the food. They have a lot of high hopes for him in the future, and he's been playing well of late. Anderson brings it up. Calls for play number four. Gary looking inside. They want to get the ball into Rousen. Let him work away from Robinson now. Gary from three-point land. Mark Gary, who shoots better, that will do a little wonders for Gary's confidence. He's been a very streaky three-point shooter. He's had some games where he go four for six, five for six, then he'll come back and go 0 for four, 0 for five. Somehow caught on the floor. Somebody throwing uh, gum on the floor. 10.54 left to play in the first half. UNCW has cut that lead down to five. It's been as much as 10, 18, 13 our score. Showing much more pressure. The Wilmington students just looking for any reason to explode. Doug Lochick takes the ball up. Now Robinson working on the right side, and then reverse the ball to Lochick. From three-point line, he misses. Rousen clears the rebound. Lochick only shooting 40%. That's the knock on him, but he's not been able to shoot. But he says he just didn't have a chance last year, and this year he's shooting a little bit more, but not, not, not nailing him. Miles looks inside to Rousen. Lochick falls down. Anderson from three-point lane gets iron and bounces around. Little Mark Gary doing the job on the board, tries to knock it off of Robinson's leg, but Hopkins saves it. Fast break goes the other way. And they got Turner for a charge on that one. Great defensive play that time by the Seahawks. Turner has fouled out of the game seven times this year. But Coach Herman said uh, four of those were in the first five games. Since then, he's settled down. He's been a real good ball player for him. That's his second foul. Team fourth, Turner and Wojcik have both of the fouls. The two fouls apiece. UNCW working on the offense. Chance to cut it down to three. Outside is Gary. Wojcik picking him up close now since he's hit that three-pointer. Kevin Miles, not a threat from out there, but they, they want Robinson to play. Reverses it out to Gary. Oh. I don't think Mark Gary threw that design that one to come off the glass, but anyway, we'll take it. Lead now to 18-16. Pete Herman hollering instructions to Wojcik. And hey, we got to get Robinson back in this ballgame. 
The crowd now can do wonders for the Seahawks. You don't think it'll well, that's bother not Navy. Navy's played in Las Vegas and Kentucky with the NCAA regional finals against Duke. The crowd will not hurt Navy, but it should help the Seahawks. David Robinson with his 12 point gets the lead back to four. Inside is Rouse and Pup. Well, third about his third play, Robinson pulled one out on his end of the court. Brian Rouse is down at this end, says, I can throw up a rainbow and watch this ball in as well. Navy breaks the press by getting the ball to David Robinson. Not a very smart foul on Kevin Miles' part at that time. But there you saw the ability of David Robinson. You wonder sometimes in practice if he might not like to play around as a, three, as a point guard just for a little while to show what he can do. Someday if they need him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt seeing David Robinson out there. That was Kevin Miles' first foul, 16 foul. Next time, Navy will be in the bonus. Coach McPherson working the officials down there. But Wojcik looking back to the bench. I got a feeling Pete Herman says we've got to have David Robinson in this ballgame. He doesn't have a foul. Let's, let's get it inside. Robinson with the shot blocked by Miles. Quickly back up front court comes Anderson to Gary. Gary with a shot. And is called for the challenge. Jerry Stone says that the defense was back and set up. McPherson liked the play. That was a seventh foul, but a player control foul. Gary gave the fist on, said he wants to come out. Coach McPherson looked the other way. He needs that shooting in there. Ball not slapped by Sandy Anderson, but maybe controlled. Bochick looking for three-pointer. Blind screen that time to get the, the ball to Reese into Hopkins. Knocked away by Kevin Miles. But they say he got more hand than ball. Kevin Miles, quickly two fouls on him. And we are in the bonus situation for Navy. They'll be shooting one and one. Hopkins at the line. A big change in this game and the game in January. In January, Reese had 26 points, and uh, Robinson had uh, 12. Robinson already has 14 in this game. Hopkins at the line shooting 62% as a team. The midshipman not shooting as well as they would like, I'm sure. At 66 percent he misses the first into the game now for navy comes number 23 bobby jones not the former nba or carolina player and not the golfer a sophomore next free throw also passes away but leave it right there to grab the rebound navy will set it back up those are the rebounds you need to have when you're playing a team like navy you can't let the easy ones get away Wojcik from three-point land. Misses. Robinson battling for the rebound. Knocked out of his hand. Ball goes off. Of, off the head of Warren Best, our cameraman down there. They say UNCW will control. Timeout on the court. We'll be back with the score. Navy Connor, UNCW 18, 7.48 to play. The brown bag lunch has been with us since the dawn of civilization. Through the ages, man has made improvements in the bag. Still, the contents often left much to be desired. But now, Hardy's rewrites brown bag history with the brown bag special. A quarter pound cheeseburger, regular fries, and a medium Coke for only $1.99. It's a full meal at a special price, just $1.99. After all these years, Hardy's has made the brown bag special because we're out to win you over. Jones Ford Chrysler Plymouth Dodge, Brunswick County's most progressive dealership, can save you big bucks right now on all new Dodge trucks and vans with 3.9% financing, plus rebates up to $500. Now is the time to buy a new Dodge truck or van with special low prices, discounts, and 3.9% financing for a limited time at Brunswick County's most progressive dealership. Jones Ford Chrysler Plymouth Dodge in Shalot. Back at Trask Coliseum, 20 to 18, Navy's lead has been cut to two, and one of the reasons has to be the bench play, and all of it coming from Mark Gary, two three-point bombs. He has six points, while the Navy has only produced two points, that, of course, by Hopkins. The Seahawks have not shot a free throw yet. Navy is four for seven, and therein is the difference in the score. Only 14 fouls charged against the Navy. There are Academy. fans all over the place. The fans are waving them. Navy will have uh, be back on defense. 
And the only change coming right, we told you right before, Bobby Jones now in the lineup. Anderson still running the point for the Seahawks. Last game, uh, he had six assists in that ball game, so not a bad having him out there at point. Of course, that's the game Adam Porter went down. UNCW once again going to look to reverse the ball. Uh, Kevin Miles down in the corner by himself, but uh, not particularly known to be a good three-point shooter. Inside it goes to Charles Terry. Terry, just like Coach McPherson, has been drawing it up on the chalkboard all week, got the ball down low, put a couple of head fakes on David Robinson and drew the foul. Robinson has fouled out of two games this year. One of them was the uh, game against Wilmington back in January, but by the time he fouled out, the uh, outcome was pretty well decided. There was only about four minutes to play. Maybe won that game by 14, 72 to 58. Charles Terry be shooting two. He gets a little bit of the rim, but he gets it to go down. Seahawks all season have been a uh, good team in shooting the free throws around 72%. Second one gets iron. Robinson not able to block Brian Rouson out. Rouson had the rebound, but now they say it went off his leg out of bounds. 2019, the lead down to one. That's the closest the Seahawks have been. When you get the ball and turn around and see 7 1 David Robinson there, it does something to a player. UNCW setting up in a man to man press. They'll break it by getting the ball to Robinson. Not a bad uh, person to have his hands in. He can throw it over the top of the defense. Wojcik finally gets it. UNCW scrambling back. Looks like they may be running that, uh... well, now they're back into a straight 2-3. For a while there, we talked about uh, UNCW throwing a bunch of different defenses. One of them we thought that they might go is with a triangle and two, but that's not the case right now. Ball way out to Doug Wojcik. They're going to say, if you're going to hurt us, Doug, you're going to have to put it down. Wojcik from three, misses again. Charles Terry had his hand on the rebound, but stripped away by Bobby Jones. Lieber with the shot, head fake, blocked by Charles Terry. Blocked by Ryan Rouson on David Robinson. He's calling for the jump ball. But the we saw something there, Bill. Wojcik has tried a couple of three-pointers. He's been off the rim. The Navy guards have not been shooting well. And uh, Coach Herman this afternoon said he needs a little more consistency. He needs help for David Robinson. Robinson's been awesome uh, scoring... Um, 45 points in two of his last three games, but he's not been getting help. The guards have not been hitting, so the defenses have been piling in, uh, piling down on Robinson. David Robinson's first free throw is good. 14 points on the game now for the All-American. Robinson makes them both. 64% free throw shooter coming in the game. He has made three of four. 22-19, Navy leads it. 6.28 left to go in the first half. Inside the ball goes to Brian Rouson. Little jump hook. Misses Wojcik, clears it out. Running the fast break. Nothing there, they'll pull it back and set it up. David Robinson looks a little tired. I'm beginning to wonder if uh, he might not be still bothered by a flu that hampered him earlier in the year. What a bad couple of holes. Navy had 11 games in 22 days, the last one being last Sunday at Kentucky. They were tired, but they've been off since Sunday. They flew in uh, to Wilmington this morning, so the team should be rested. Turnover goes over to UNCW. Bobby Jones has it now. UNCW turns the ball over. Jones a little anxious. Thought Carl Lieber had beat Kevin Miles down on the block, but Miles getting back, sealed off Liebert, and the ball went out of bounds. Now they say it was touched last by a UNCW player. Rob Wagner in for the Seahawks, uh, replacing Sandy Anderson. Inbounds play goes right where they wanted in the paint. That time, air ball from David Robinson. The defense bothers him. Rousen clears the rebound. Rousen was looking for Gary on the break, but he couldn't get the outlet pass. UNCW can pull within one on the regular field goal, tied up with a three-pointer. 22-19 to score. Mark Gary put a little shoulder into Wojcik, but the uh, referee on top of it realized a little Hollywood on the part. Ball reversed to Gary. Into Rouson. He was surprised they had David Robinson off balance, put up the shot, did not go. Fast break the other way. And they got Liebert for the charge. Rob Wagner took it. Bad judgment that time on the part of Carl Liebert. 
Wagner had been camping in the lane. He drew the charge. Wagner's the smallest man on the court. He's also the only Seahawk player who's married. Rob, a senior from Indiana. Wagner back running the point. Sandy Anderson on the bench gets a little break. 16 fouls now on the Naval Academy. The Seahawks will milk some time off the clock if they can. They don't want to get in the running game with Navy. Navy averaging 80 points a game. At the same time, they don't want oh. shots like that. Mark Gary forces at baseline. Hopkins clears the rebound. Navy getting a lot of help off the bench rebounding by the freshman, Byron Hopkins. Bochick sets it up. Robinson on the left side. They're trying to get a screen. That time, Brian Rouse and Preston gets the ball away. Wagner on the break. Robinson hustling back. We talked about his quickness. We talked about what kind of an athlete he is. That time, he got all the way back and stole the ball. He just ran down Wagner and put that long arm out there. Tremendous reach. Maybe trying to work the baseline behind the UNCW defense. That's how Doug Woach is loose in the middle, puts up a shot. His first bucket of the ball game. 24-19, lead back out to five points. 3.53 left in the first half. It's been a fast-paced game with a lot of intensity. Charles Carey back out to Miles. Reverse it out to Gary, three-point land. Mark Gary on fire. That's his third three-pointer of the ball game. That brought the crowd up again. 24-22, cut the lead down to two. Doug Wojcik looked for the three-pointer, didn't have it. Bobby Jones drills one in from about 17 feet. His first bucket of the ball game, 26-22. That's three southpaws out there. Jones, Wojcik, and Robinson, all left-handed. Nice entry pass. Good job by Mark Gary to get the ball down low to Rousen. Then a good job by both Charles Cherry and Kevin Miles who got the tip on that play to get it back in. 26-24, the lead is two. Leave it back outside to Jones, Wojcik, to Hopkins. Funny little set shot almost. Kind of just lifted his toes off the ground, but it counts too. Nice soft little touch, high arch on it. 28-24 the score. Hopkins with his fourth point. Rousham and Robinson unofficially each have four rebounds. Well, right in front of us, Rob Wagner working against Doug Wojcik. Could have been Wojcik's third foul, but referee Duke Edsel says, nope, Wagner, you put your shoulder down. And well, with the score, 28-24 in favor of Navy. 2.19 left to play. We'll be back with more right after these messages. When you buy a new car, two things are important, quality and price. Hi, I'm Bob King, and we have both. Quality, the 1987 Sunbird, one of America's most popular cars, price, only $92.95. Quality and price to match any import. The 1987 Sunbird, only $92.95, at Bob King Pontiac GMC truck, North and South Carolina's only Pontiac master dealer. We make it happen for you. When it comes to fuel oil services, no one can hold a candle to Godwin Oil Company. Don't get burned with a small oil company that can't keep up with your cold weather home heating demands. Godwin Oil Company's large fleet of radio dispatch trucks and vans service home heating systems every hour of the day, even weekends and holidays. And we're located in your hometown. That's why in Wilmington, no one can hold a candle to Godwin Oil Company. <laughs> oil heat, the intelligent choice. Call Godwin Oil Company at 762-0312. 219 left to play in the first half. 28-24, your score. Navy leads it. One of the differences after Navy went up by 10 points, Doug Wojcik got pulled behind the three-point line with 0 for 4. Meanwhile, Mark Gary coming off the bench has hit three of those from downtown for UNCW. He has nine points. And that, of course, put UNCW right back in the ball game. There are three pro scouts in attendance here tonight. Al Melendez from the New Jersey Nets, Mel Daniels from the Indiana Pacers, and Bill McKinney from the Chicago Bulls, all on hand, and they're seeing a good, hard-fought uh, ball game. 
Navy was intense coming in. They said they knew that Wilmington was ranked number two in their main threat in the conference, and they were ready for the ball game. In the backcourt for the midshipmen, number four, that's uh, Neil Fenton. Good ball handling. Giving Wojcik a rest. Hopkins catches it, turns around inside. The battle for the rebound off David Robinson. Robinson going up to uh, referee Jerry Stone says, come on, you got to get some of those bodies off me. Give me a room to operate. He gets this every game. He must get used to it, but I imagine by the end of the season, he gets somewhat tired. Coach McPherson said they were going to put a lot of bodies on Robinson, try to wear him down in the first half. Gary looked for the entry pass, had to reverse it out to Anderson. I don't think Mark wants to shoot that three-pointer with uh, seven foot one David Robinson in space. Mark Gary, oh, Mark Gary is playing the game of his life tonight. A drive in there. Mark Gary has 11 points. 28, 26 to lead back down to two. In the corner it goes to Reese. Benton off the bench. Three-point land doesn't get it. The battle around the rebound. Charles Cherry had a hand on it. However, maybe that was Byron Hopkins. He has six points now off the bench. 30 to 26. One minute left to play in the first half. Brown wanted a foul there, and none called. Anderson to Gary. They're, they're respecting him an awful lot right now, I can tell you that. Miles gets him. He's working against Robinson again. They want to do that to make him work on defense. They want to attack the weak side to make Robinson work on defense. Tire him out. 15 seconds on the shot clock. That time, Mark Gary draws all iron. Fenton gets the rebound, brings it back up. He may have rushed that last one just a tad. Reese in the corner up top to David Robinson. Nice move. Derek Turner battles Charles Terry for the rebound. Now the shot clock is off with uh, 17 seconds to go, so the Hawks will play for that last shot. They'll take their time. Brian Rousem at the other end had problems with the shoestring. They hold it up. Nine seconds left in the ball game. Eight. Mark Gary from three. Oh. And the rebound by Miles just rolled off. Mark Gary with the three-pointer just rolled out. Miles just missed the tip in at halftime. It's the Naval Academy 30-26. We'll be back with Steve Cashel and some special guests right after this. In sports or in business, any team is only as successful as the members of that team. And I'd like to introduce you to the most successful sales and service team in southeastern North Carolina. David Dickens, Chevrolet sales manager. Lynn Rayner, Chevrolet truck manager. Skip Allen, Chevrolet used car manager. Danny Witt, Chevrolet general sales manager. Ed Smith, Chevrolet parts and service director. Bill Hoops, general manager, Chevrolet, Honda, BMW. And those are the members of my winning team, the Don Kimball Good People. Keep on a good thing rolling. At Hughes Brothers Tire, it means a lot more to us than just something we put on a sign. service department that's just what you'll find and we always try to be more than just another place to buy tires or get a tune-up or battery we want to be the place Hughes Brothers Tires 11th and Market Streets Wilmington for over 65 years here in Southport people really know how to relax and here in Hampstead people know how to relax the people of Wilmington <laughs> well they know how to relax too you see, all these folks have heard about the individual retirement accounts at People's Federal. And they're dropping by and opening IRAs to save on taxes and earn tax-deferred interest so they can be ready for retirement. Hi. And so they can relax now. Avoid the tax rush by opening your IRA at People's Federal today and relax. Southeastern Electron, Pioneer Sound Systems, and B100 are sponsoring Sound Wars. Saturday, July 19th, the judges will decide who has the best quality car stereo. If you have 50% Pioneer products, come qualify for the fun and excitement. Southeastern has Wilmington's only simulated car, where you can listen to stereos and speakers representing how it will sound in your car. Be a part of Sound Wars, Saturday, July 19th. Pioneer and Southeastern Electronics, for the latest technology in home and car entertainment. 1002 South College Road. Time and we're back at halftime here at Trask Coliseum on the campus of UNCW. Navy, Navy leading by four at 30 to 26. 
You know, everyone, both of these teams are on the CAA Conference, a conference which is growing stronger every year. And with me is the commissioner of the CAA, Mr. Tom Yeager. Tom, step in. Welcome to Wilmington, first of all. And I'm sure that uh, you're impressed with the type of attitude that uh, these people have shown here at UNCW all week long from camping out Monday night. Is that indicative of the type of things you want going on in your CAA? Well, I think so. I, you know, the uh, folks at at Wilmington really getting behind the Seahawks is evidence tonight. This place has been electric for really all day, and it's been a great game. Uh, you really see the wheels turning, and the coaches, they're, they're uh, the real chess match out there, and a great game for the fans. Uh huh. Also, now, the CAA gets one. Your conference champion is an automatic bid into the NCAA. Do you, as a commissioner and your board of directors, have a goal towards getting more teams into the NIT and NCAA? How many would you like to see? Well, I think what we'd like to see is, you know, last year we had two teams in the NCAA and a third in the NIT. I think that'd be a great goal this year, you know, if we could do the same thing, to, you know, get a second team in and a, and a you know, a third in the NIT. It'd be, be super. And I think that's a realistic goal, and, but we'll just have to wait and see how it all comes out. All right. Well, Tom, best of luck and continued success in the CAA League. Well, thank you. It's been a good season, and I uh, hope we can continue to have these kind of games all season long. All right. Thanks so much, Tom, for stopping by. And you know, everyone, when you think of UNCW, you think of Brian Ralston. When you think of the CAA, you think of David Robinson. Well, Brian Ralston has been in the wraps, under wraps, for quite a while under David Robinson. But earlier, I had a chance to take a look at David Robinson and to Brian Ralston. And look at what Brian Ralston's dreams and his goals are. So we put a little feature together. Take a look. While Navy's David Robinson is a true aircraft carrier and legitimate candidate for Player of the Year honors, UNC Wilmington's Brian Rousson is a battleship who has come a long way in four years as a Seahawk and is now destined for a career in the NBA. And in these dark days of collegiate athletics, where the beauty of sports has been overshadowed by drugs and school dropouts, Ralsom is one student athlete who's concerned about finishing school and receiving a degree. Brian, when you came here four years ago, did you ever think you'd accomplish what you would here? No way. I, I didn't think I could play college ball at first. Um, I got off to such a bad start, you know, in the start of my first year. And, it was just uh, marred by inconsistency, you know, throughout the season, and, and I had my doubts, but, you know, uh, I just kept at it, and I had a couple of good games toward the end of my first year, and it seemed to give me confidence. Now that you've accomplished so much at UNCW, do you have any regrets about ever coming here and instead maybe no, thinking about going to a larger <laughs> school? Not at all. I don't, I don't think I was good enough out of high school to go to a larger school. And, and plus, you know, I, I didn't want to go to a school where I would have to sit on a bench for a year or two before I was even able to play. And coming here gave me experience and gave me a chance to play immediately, and I think that's kind of helped off. What's your early thoughts when you come out of high school thinking about going to UNCW? Did you ever think you'd have a chance for pros? No, I, I, it's something that you always dream about, you know, in high school and junior high. You always watch the pros on TV and you say, wow, I want to play pro ball. But you don't realize that uh, how tough it is until you do get in college and see the competition and all the other good players, you know, that have a shot but don't make it. So, you know, it's a once in a lifetime thing for me and I want to make the best uh, opportunity out of it I can. Right into his legs. Rousen over aisle, scores again. Let's go back to the Indiana Classic. Uh, was that one of your top honors ever being named the MVP? Probably individual-wise, that was my biggest honor. You know, anytime you can go up in Indiana and a, a basketball state like that is and come away with an MVP honor, the first time it's ever been done by a non-Indiana player, is, is tremendous, and it was the biggest honor of my career. You know, Brian's going to remember honors like that of being the MVP at the Indiana Classic, and he's also going to be remembered for being one person that has put UNC on the basketball map. Pressure here 
in my first two years than I could have done it. I couldn't have pushed myself that hard in play so. Well, the midshipmen are asked to excel in three different areas. Uh, in addition to academics, of course, they have the athletic program plus the professional requirements. Uh, each midshipman has to find what he does best, but we expect him to perform well in all activities. The unity here is greater than anything I've ever felt before. It's one big family. Everybody works together, and that, that makes it a lot easier. The United States Naval Academy, where opportunities of a lifetime begin. Carolina at Wilmington, celebrating a 40-year investment by the proud citizens of New Hanover County. From computer English to marine biology, UNC by the sea looks to the future and sees gold. Dr. Tom McLennan of the university's English department talks about their innovative use of the word processor. Uh, within about the last uh, year and a half, we've uh, been studying the various applications of word processing in, in various parts of the English curriculum. Uh, in the uh, remedial stages, in the traditional composition programs, and also in the professional writing uh, areas. In international business, the Wilmington Ports Authority has opened the door to the students and teachers of UNCW. In the Marine Biology Department, ranked eighth in the nation, students are helping and learning all about the endangered loggerhead sea turtle. Director of the Masonboro Island Sea Turtle Assessment Program is Dr. Dave Webster. In southeastern North Carolina, we're at the northern limit of the nesting range of loggerhead sea turtles. And what we're trying to do here is to determine, are we producing an equal sex ratio, or are we producing more males, which you would predict. A small university with big benefits and low tuition, a school looking to the future and the business any team is only as successful as the members of that team and I'd like to introduce you to the most successful sales team in southeastern North Carolina Bobby Neal sales manager Honda Joe Crump service manager Honda Jeff McHugh general manager Honda Mike Klein leasing manager John Ponis BMW sales specialist and those are the members of my winning team the Don Kimball good people You're looking at the best reason to come to Wrightsville Beach, Austin's Seafood Restaurant. Come to Austin's and try everything. Crab legs, shrimp, king mackerel, and more. Try their salad bar, try their ribs. Try and find a better buffet than this. You won't because this is Austin's Seafood Buffet. And it's all you can eat for just $8.95. If that's not enough, Austin's menu has seafood specialties, plus chicken, steak, and lobster. Austin's Seafood Restaurant. Where else but in Wrightsville Beach? back again at Trask Coliseum. When Mark Gary came down here from Indiana, he was one of the top 12 high school players in Indiana. He had the reputation as a great shooter. He was slow coming around, but he's got the three-pointer going tonight. Doug Wojcik working the ball for the Navy, looking again to get it inside of Ro to Robinson. He has it, but uh, three Seahawks on him every time he gets it. Steal by Sandy Anderson. Sandy Anderson with the steal. Two quick buckets in the second half. That's the Seahawks' first lead since the first basket. Anderson showing his foot speed then, left Wojcik behind. Robinson taking it inside. Looks Brian Rousen trying to draw the charge. Looks like he had good position, but they're letting him play. David and the Robinson. Seahawks wanted a charging foul on Robinson. David Robinson with his first two of the first, the second half. Navy staying in that man-to-man. -man. They want to take the ball right at David Robinson but with a quick hand. He's knocking the ball loose. But Doug Wojcik, I believe they got with the reaching foul that time. That's serious problems for him because that is his third foul. First team foul. But uh, Doug Wojcik, certainly the man they say makes the rest of these folks go. He's the motor on that uh, Navy team. Greg Bender back in for the Seahawks, and he's one of their better three-point shooters. Greg not been scoring much of late, but doing the other things. He's a good team role player. 
Anderson running the point. Gary alone. David Robinson with the block on Brian Rousen. Had 14 blocks a year ago. Carl Liebert down low. Good entry pass to get it into Carl Liebert working down low. 36-33. The Navy League goes back to three points. To give you an idea of Robinson shot blocking, last year Robinson blocked 207. Only one team, Louisville, who led the nation with 213, had more. Foul called down underneath. Looks like it's going to be against Derek Turner. That is his third foul. He got in foul trouble early in the first half, but that was not good news for the Seahawks because fresh, freshman Byron Hopkins came in and scored six points off the bench and got a couple of rebounds. On that last block, Robinson just stood there and let Rousen fake, and when Rousen finally decided to go up for the shot, Robinson went up with him. He said, you make your move, and then I'll make mine. Brian at the line now will be shooting two. 75% free throw shooter. Good touch all around. That is his seventh point of the ball game. UNCW coach Robert McPherson wants two men back to stop any chance of a Navy fast break. He's got both Sandy Anderson and Mark Geary off the line. David Robinson answers. Sandy, by the way, had 19 points in the second half against Coastal Carolina earlier this year. Well, when in trouble, go to Robinson. Navy has done that twice now since the Seahawks tied it and went ahead. They just go right back to Robinson. He gets in the middle, and that's where the Seahawks cannot let him roam. UNCW now working against the 2-3 zone of Navy. Greg Bender. He got a three point. Point. Greg Bender, that's his fifth point of the ball game. UNCW has the lead for the first time at 41-40. Doug Wojcik stepping up inside to get the jump shot. Three men on Robinson. Rousen clears the rebound. The Navy. Seahawks did a good job of blocking out that last time. Robinson had no chance to get it. There's another time that he came down the court and stole the ball coming from behind the Seahawks player. I think David Robinson may have gotten away with one that time. I don't, uh, don't think he got all ball in that play. However, on the uh, ensuing trip back, they say that it's Sandy Anderson touch and the whistle blows. David Robinson came into this ball game with 89 blocks on the year. Sandy Anderson. Mark Gary will draw a crowd every time now. Once again, Rousen turns on Robinson, fights for his own rebound, cleared out by Carl Lieber. Looked Lieber. like Rousen forced that one a little bit, got a little more arch on it than he really wanted. Sandy Anderson again picks Doug Wojcik's pocket. You know, against Kentucky, he had that problem but Navy clears the ball out against the Kentucky guards, but today Sandy Anderson is, has bothered him somewhat as well. Against Kentucky, Wojcik had a, a difficult time getting the ball up court, and they said that the reason was because Kentucky's guards were so good. We'll be back with more Seahawks basketball tied at 45 right after this. a month continues till this Sunday only. Atlantic Marine featuring 1987 Johnson Outboards continues their incredible savings on all well crafts. Save over $2,000 on this 18-foot well craft classic and pay as little as $190 down, $190 a month with no payments till March. Yes, the incredible boat show savings and this Sunday at Atlantic Marine, your Johnson Outboards dealer at Wrightsville Beach at Bradley Creek. Take a look around you and you'll see us. We're Ray Sand Building Corporation, and for the past 20 years, we've provided Wilmington with cost-efficient buildings, serving a variety of needs. A Ray Sand Building is energy efficient, with flexible design plans allowing aesthetic and structural freedom. And a Ray Sand Building is ready for use in a matter of weeks, thanks to computer-designed and pre-engineered components. No job is too large or too small for Ray Sand, for industrial, warehouse, retail, even residential needs. Call us. We're Ray Sand Building Corporation. Back, Back trash by the trash coliseum. Brian Rawson with eight points and David Robinson with 16 uh, for the game. Robinson five rebounds and uh, Rawson has four. Naval Academy working the ball in under their own basket. Uh, looks like UNCW is running that triangle in two that Coach McPherson told us about earlier in the week. 
keeping three men right around Rouse and playing two men out on the shooters, partly because Cliff Reese has had only two points in this ball game, I think. I want to check that scoring I just gave for Robinson. Robinson has 21 for the game. Well, as we mentioned, that Cliff Reese has not been shooting the ball well. He forces one up then, gets the bucket, and draws the foul. That is his fourth point of the ball game. I think during that timeout, Pete Herman said, look, you fellas, David Robinson is drawing all the attention, uh, and you guys are left open. You're going to have to hit it just to give him a chance to rebound because he's only had one rebound in the second half. Free throws good. Both coaches know that they need help from the bench. They need help from the perimeter because the defense is sagging on the big man, Robinson and Rousen. Five points for Cliff Reese all in the second half. Sandy Anderson still working the point. We haven't seen much of Rob Wagner in the second half. Haven't seen him at all, as a matter of fact. Kevin Miles down low. UNCW wanting to attack the Naval Academy in the middle. Pete Herman said, what kind of foul was that? But good job by Kevin Miles to get the ball down to the low first post turn on Hopkins and draw the foul. Miles is the type of ball player that would have fooled you every once in a while. He's out there, you don't notice he's there, and the next thing you know, he's mixed up in all the action. He'll be shooting two. First one a little strong. Kevin Miles came into this game as 71% free throw shooter. Wasn't actually going to play this year. Thought about uh, bypassing his senior year. Coach talked him into coming in about August, and he was a little bit behind, but now is catching up with the condition. He makes the second. That pulls the Seahawks within two at 48-46. 11.38 to go in the first half. Second half, excuse me. David Robinson with two fouls. Brian Rousen with one. Look for both of those guys to start getting a little bit more active because neither one is in foul trouble right now. Carl Lieber with a wide open jumper at the key. He's going to have to hit that. He tries and draws all iron. Miles clears the rebound. UNCW fast on the attack. Mark Gary left alone, but that's NBA di uh, distance there. Rousen turning on Robinson, facing him. Pump fake. Clears it back out to Gary. Reese has the job now on Mark Gary. Maybe back to the man-to-man. -man. Inside again goes Brian Rousen. That ties it at 48 with 10.50 left to play in the game. 12 points for Brian Rousey. His matchup against David Robinson one-on-one. -on -one. Doesn't look like either man can stop each other. David Robinson making the strong move. Draws the foul. Offensive charge. They wave off the bucket. And that is the third personal foul on David Robinson. Robinson stopped talked to the official, put his hand on his back and said, what did I do? I think he was a little disappointed with himself. He went uh, a little bit too strong with too much coverage on him. He may be trying to do too much. He's not getting the help from the outside. Listen, blown. That foul on uh, Hopkins. Number 33, Byron Hopkins with his second foul. Derek Turner already on the bench with four. David Robinson with three. So that front line of the midshipmen quickly drawing a lot of attention to the foul calls. That was also the seventh feet foul. Kevin Miles shooting one and one. Kevin seems to have found his stroke. Good follow through that time. Hits them both. UNCW lead 50 to 48. 10 48 left in the second half. UNCW going back to a 2 3. Got that time. Yes, Andy Anderson clears the rebound. Turnover against Sandy Anderson. That time he drove it down a little bit much. Tried to create. Seahawks are saying that the ball was tipped away. Conference by the officials. But Sandy got a little bit out of control that time. Coach McPherson talking. He didn't like it. 50-48 to score. Maybe looking to tie. David Robinson still drawing the attention of three. Three yeah. points. Won't you get it? That's his first one in, I think, three games. He was 0 for 4 in the first half. First bucket of the second half. Anderson. Drive. Seahawks back in front by 
That's a ninth point for Sandy Anderson in the second half. 13 on the ball game. UNCW up 52-51. Doug Wojcik left alone. After he hit the last one, you think they might get out on him a little bit, but they like this triangle and two. Greg Bender, good job. Good hands by Greg Bender reaching in. Sandy Anderson thought that Greg Bender knocked it off with David, David Robinson's leg, complaining to the official. They say, no, the ball is out of bounds. UNCW calling a timeout with the score 52-51 in favor of the Seahawks. We'll be right back after these messages. Burnley Lincoln Mercury Red Carpet Lease Plan through Ford Motor Credit Company makes sense for a lot of reasons. First, you pay only for what you use, not the full price of the vehicle. Second, there is no used vehicle to dispose of at lease end. Third, leasing frees your cash and bank line of credit for other purposes. Fourth, when leasing for business purposes, tax records are simplified, and great cars like luxury Lincolns, Grand Marquis, Topaz, and Sables are available on a red carpet lease through Ford Credit for qualified leasees. Coming today to Friendly Lincoln Mercury, Wilmington. Relax and fight the high cost of heating bills with Godwin Oil Company. Did you know that oil is 15% more efficient than gas on the average? And at Godwin Oil Company, you don't have to make a big payment. You can spread it out over 10 months. And yes, Godwin Oil Company still makes house calls with a large fleet of radio dispatch trucks and vans to service all your cold weather home heating demands. So fight high heat bills and relax. Oil heat, the intelligent choice. Call Godwin Oil Company, 762-0312. Okay, going into this game, David Robinson had 2,300 career points. He ranked 54th on the all-time NCAA scoring list. 21 tonight. He's moved up six or seven places. He's passed Eric Floyd of uh, Georgetown, Jerry West, David Thompson of NC State, Chuck Person of Auburn, and Jeff Lamp of uh, Virginia. Uh, three more points, and he'll pass Billy McGill of Utah and Mike Jaminski of Duke. He hasn't been able to get the ball very much in the second half in the scoring position. UNCW employing that triangle and two defense. That's three men packing down on, under on David Robinson and uh, with two men chasing the other guys on the outside. And so far, it has been pretty much uh, very effective, especially with Sandy Anderson rebounding and also coming up with nine points in the second half. Davey will inbound the ball under their own bucket. UNCW in a matchup zone. Crowd wanted five seconds. They get it. UNCW kept the midshipmen from getting it in and get a five-second call. And I tell you, we've got two defensive-minded coaches in this ball game. I'm sure that even though it went against his team, Pete Herman could, uh, could appreciate that, and certainly uh, Robert McPherson can enjoy it. Ball knocked away out of bounds. Last touch by the midshipmen. You mentioned the changing coaches and the, and the wheels turning in there. Both of these coaches, as you mentioned, Bill, strong defensive coaches, but they stress intensity, hard work. UNCW on the tack. Sandy Anderson still running the point. Turns away the three-pointer. Mark Gary. Gary has iron. Robinson clears it. Kicked out of bounds by Mark Gary. Good job, though. One of the things that uh, Coach McPherson wanted to do was slow down the break of the midshipmen. They have a tendency to get the ball to Wojcik and push it up pretty quickly. And one of the things he said we have to do is have to play defense after they get the rebound, along the, with going to the offensive board. And for the most part tonight, uh, the Seahawks um, have uh, stopped that Navy fast break. Bobby Jones in the lineup now for the midshipmen. Missed by Hopkins. Rousen clears the rebound. Anderson pushing it up. They've got a four-on-two situation. The Navy gets back quickly. Bender from three-point range, facing it away, then gets the shot off, no good. David Robinson with the rebound. Clears quickly to Jones. Jones doesn't like the number, pulls it back, they're going to set it up again. Wojcik with the seam. Doug Wojcik drives, Brian Rousen gets the block. The official says that Greg Bender moved in and did not draw the charge and got the blocking foul. That's not good news for the Seahawks. That is his third. 8.24 left in the ball game. Four or five times, some of the security people have had to go out and get uh, trash off the floor. UNC Wilmington has worked very hard this week with students talking about how to uh, handle themselves at the game, how to act, how to behave. For the most part, it's been pretty good. Doug Wojcik, the point guard. The two free throws, you'd think that uh, being the point guard that 
He'd be a good free throw shooter, and 77% he usually is. But he misses two. Anytime you miss two free throws like that, that's the same as a turnover. That was Robinson's fourth rebound here in the second half. Robinson has three. Bender inside to Miles, back out to Bender. Sandy Anderson from three-point range just misses it. Brees clears the rebound. UNCW getting back very well, stopping the break. They got the man in the corner like they want on the break, but it was the wrong man. They like to have Reese down there, but he cleared the rebound. Yeah, now, Gary in front of Robinson on the backside. Rousen. And, and also two. around the miles. Wojcik starting to heat up, but that was only for two. 53-52, Navy has the lead. Maybe starting to back off and give UNCW the long shot. Brian Rousen with the jump hook misses. Rebound tipped up by Byron Hopkins into Robinson's hand. Wojcik back quickly. Crowd wanted to travel, so did Sandy Anderson on that play. Doesn't get it. Greg Bender with his fourth personal foul. UNCW in trouble there. Seven minutes, 11 seconds to play here in the second half. Navy on top, 53-52. Uh, Greg Bender only has five points in this ballgame, averaging eight, <laughs> excuse me, averaging 8.4, but is a very smart player and a very key performer on the court for Seahawks. Reese with the free throw. That is his sixth point of the ball game, all in the second half. He'll get the second. Navy's pulled out now to a three-point lead, and uh, Coach McPherson wants a timeout. Coach Robert McPherson with the timeout and with the score, the Naval Academy 55, UNCW 52. We'll be back with more in a minute with Seahawk basketball. All the good people at Don Kimball Chevrolet, Honda, BMW, I'd like to welcome Coach Robert McPherson and his staff to our fine area and wish he and the Seahawks great success in the 86-87 season. The coach and his team work hard every day to be the best, just like the Don Kimball good people, now in their fourth successful season, ready to give you the best. Prices or service, we can save you money. For those of you out there that don't believe I made that shot last year, back that camera up a little bit, Bob. This is for you. Dining out is one of America's favorite pastimes. It's a great way to enjoy the evening. And if you love fresh, delicious seafood, you'll love Frazier's Seafood Restaurant. Fine Dining at Frazier's is an event to be shared with friends and family with a fantastic menu of the sea's very best. Enjoy mouth-watering delicacies such as lobster, shrimp, and a variety of entrees. An evening of fine food in a relaxed atmosphere awaits you at Frazier's Seafood Restaurant, Oleander Drive, Wilmington. Of course, he can't afford uh, not to be in there at the end when we need people to shoot foul shots because he is one of the better foul shooters for the Seahawks. And as we meant, alluded to earlier, a very smart player. Sometimes the players are get caught up in the intensity of a game like this and make a foul they know they shouldn't make, but they get in there. For Navy, this half, uh, Reese has seven points, the most of uh, any of the Navy players. He didn't scratch at the first half. He's three for three from the line. Well, he's drawn his eye in, and Navy now has a 55-52 lead. There seems to be uh, a bit of confusion here on the sidelines. Officials wanting to find out who that last timeout was charged to. They called both coaches to midcourt. Discussion going on at the... Uh, That's Pete Herman, the Navy coach in the dark coat, Robert McPherson in the uh, tan coat, the UNC Wilmington uh, coach. Both are in their first uh, year as a head coach in the Colonial Athletic Association. Herman had uh, six seasons as an assistant at the Naval Academy before being named the head coach this year. Whatever it was, they've got it solved. I think it was uh, a question of how many timeouts UNCW has left. 52-55, they trail by three. 
A little bit more pressure on the wing by Bobby Jones on Greg Bender. Anderson being picked up tough by Wojcik. Navy still in the zone, but they're extending it just a little bit more. There's 15 seconds on the shot clock. Good catch inside by Brian Rouse, and one thing he does is have NBA hands. Mark Gary with his... Gary tied it up at 55 with 6.25 to play in the game. His fifth third three-pointer of the ball game. Back on defense, UNCW. Still in that triangle, too. Jones loose for the jumper, gets his fourth point of the ball game. 57-55, Navy leads it. UNCW working against the 2-3 of Navy. And uh, as we said, Navy trying to put a little bit more pressure out front. Seahawks are going to be patient. Look for the good shot. Sandy Anderson from three-point land. Anderson's been off. He's been to the off on the right side. He bought the iron that time. Reese, good job getting the rebound. Jones with the shot, no good. Kevin Miles, good position on David Robinson, pulls down the board. And that is the key if you're going to rebound against David Robinson is to make sure you've got good position. You need that because he can go over most players. Anderson working at the point. Bender. Mark Gary left it alone if they reverse the ball to him fast enough. He'll have a, a chance at a three-pointer. Kevin Miles forces one up in the paint. Brian Robinson rounds him down with the rebound. Falls to the ground, and they say that he traveled. And I don't agree with him, but they say that he travels. Seahawks are 7 for 12 now for the game from the three-point line. Four for, or four for eight this half. That has been the key. Mark Gary, when they were down by 10, came off the bench in the first half to hit three of them. Pull it back in the ball game. Good job on the entry pass that time by Bobby Jones down low to Hopkins. He made a good pivot inside. Brian Rouseman going for the block. Missed it. Got the backboard. And then lucky he didn't draw a technical foul. Kevin Miles looking like he needs a blow. And Coach McPherson talking to Greg Bender when he came down the sideline. UNCW still trying to work the ball into Brian Rousem against David Robinson. Pick up that fourth foul. That, with four minutes, 37 seconds left, would change the complexity of this ball game, I think. Gary off balance. Mark Gary. That uh, two-pointer, Navy leads 59-57. There's 4.20 left to play in the game. 21 points now for Mark Gary. Sophomore. With Reese starting to heat up. That's his ninth point this half. Now he's showing us why he scored 26 in the first game. Well, UNCW packing it in pretty tight, giving them that, that particular shot, but he's got to make it. He didn't in the first half, he did then. Miles throws it away. Back on the break is Wojcik. Nice pass to Cliff Reese. Good reverse layup. Good job by Doug Wojcik to get the bounce pass over to Cliff Reese. 63-57, Navy leads it, 346 left to play. UNCW calling a timeout. So, with three minutes and 43 seconds left in the ball game, the Naval Academy 63, UNCW 57. We'll be back with more Seahawks basketball. of college basketball and scenic Hampton, Virginia come together at the 1987 Colonial Athletic Association Basketball Championships. Three days of the best basketball on the East Coast in one of the most vibrant cities in Virginia. The championship dates are Saturday, February 28th through Monday, March 2nd. All the action takes place in the 10,000 seat Hampton Coliseum. Tickets for the championship tournament are on sale at each Colonial School and at the Hampton Coliseum box office. Be there for three days of exciting basketball action and the pleasures of beautiful Hampton, Virginia. Call the Hampton Coliseum box office at 804-838-4203. Join fans from American, East Carolina, George Mason, James Madison, UNC Wilmington, Navy, Richmond, and William and Mary at the CAA Championships February 28th through March 2nd. Championship College Basketball and Hampton, Virginia, a winning combination. Three left to go in the ball game. 63-57. Navy has opened up its biggest lead in the second half. UNCW with the basketball. 
Seahawks are going to need to score this time down the court. They're not going to be able to let Navy pull away uh, much more uh, than this. Of course, a couple of three-pointers, the way it goes uh, these days, and you can be back in the ball game in a hurry. And the way Gary's throwing them up, it, it could be. But the Seahawks have got to be sure to score this time. Well, Seahawks have been looking to uh, force the ball inside to Brian Rousem, hoping to pick up that foul on David Robinson. So far, they've not been successful. They may need to go back to shooting from the outside. Sandy Anderson with the ball running the point. You can bet Navy's defense is going to come out anytime Gary gets the ball outside. Anderson to Rouse and Rouse playing the high post again. Miles with the jump shot. 63-59 with a 3.23 to play. Kevin Miles comes out here every game with a lot of heart. UNCW with a zone press. Navy looks to have broken it. David Robinson with the ball holds it up. And smartly, I might say, 63-59, they lead by four. Look for them to look for a very deliberate shot. And, of course, that usually means the bread and butter man, David Robinson. But Mark Gary and Brian Rouse are doing a good job double-teaming him with some weak tied help from Kevin Miles. Of course, Reese has been heating up, and uh, he's getting loose in the corner. Look for them to reverse the ball to him and give him the jump shot. Of course, Hopkins has gotten loose inside a couple of times, too, and made some good moves. Bad pass that time by the midshipman. They threw it over David Robinson's head. Sandy Anderson smartly looks to see where David's at. As we had said to the first half of the ball game. he leads his team in steals, and that's one of the reasons, those long arms. Charles Terry in the, for the Seahawks now. Miles a pass to Rouse. Brian Rouse, his third basket of the second half. He now has eight points in the second half, 14 overall. Wojcik works it up against David Robinson, kicked out of bounds by the Seahawks. 63-61, two-point ball game. 2.18 to play, and this one uh, has all the earmarks of going right on down to the wire. Seahawks students have been standing up almost the entire game. Must have been deflected out of bounds because they didn't reset the shot clock. 33 seconds there, Reese alone in the corner. That's the only shot the Seahawks are going to give them. Nice penetrating dribble by Cliff Reese to get inside the defense, shorten up the range, and he makes the bucket. That's Reese's 13th point this half. 65-61, four-point ball game, 151 left to play. Reese is the man that's kept Navy in here and uh, given him the lead. 140 to play. Kevin Miles has been doing a good job of penetrating and creating. Um, Something that uh, the Seahawks needed. Ball knocked out of bounds. They say Bobby Jones touched it last. New 45 on the shot clock. 134 left in the ball game. Four point Navy lead. Charles Cherry back in down on the low post for the UNCW Seahawks. Brian Rouse working against Robinson. Good matchup there, Brian Rouse. We talked about him being in the shadows of David Robinson. That time he took it right at the All-American and came up with his 16th point of the game. That's the type of move the pro uh, scouts are looking for out of Rouse and see what he can do against the big man. 65-63, maybe with the ball, two-point lead, 32 on the shot clock, minute five on the game clock. Maybe taking their time, very deliberate. UNCW continuing to give them the outside shot. And it goes to Hopkins. Pressure against Rousen by Robinson. Sandy Anderson trying to create, pulls the ball back outside. 35 on the shot clock. Difference of about six seconds on the game clock. UNCW with a chance to tie or take the lead with that three-pointer. Look for them to try to get the ball inside to Brian, and if not, clear Mark Gary out. He shouldn't have the ball and be dribbling. He should be working for a pick. However, Navy switched to the man-to-man. -man. Rousem and Robinson going head-to-head -head at the top of the key. Rousem forcing up the shot. Charles Cherry with a rebound. Mark Gary. Rousem inside again. A whistle. good with eight seconds left Brian Rousen has tied the ball game Duke Edsel called the foul I don't know who he's called it on yet 
Brian Rousem forced a shot against David Robinson. Charles Terry kept the ball alive. Rousem took it right back at him. And apparently, the only decision was whether the foul was before the shot or not, and they have called the bucket good. So with eight seconds, we're tied at 65. Pete Herman looking down may want to call a timeout now and, and reset the situation. Bill, the officials have talked uh, twice all of this, the Seahawks are going to take a timeout with eight seconds to go in the score tied. Okay, score tied 65. We'll keep it here. Trying to reset that last play for you. What happened is apparently uh, the referee trying to decide whether the foul was after the shot by the shooter or not. And I think what they're saying now is that it'll be just a one-shot foul for uh, Brian Rousen. He wasn't sure whether the ball went in or not. That was one of the key calls of the game, if not the key call. Well, Duke Etzel had made a couple that we had questioned maybe, earlier. Maybe, of course, is saying way off the basket. Coach McPherson is pointing down to two. The key again on that uh, on that last on that last play as we take another look at it was the hustle by Charles Cherry on the weak side. You'll watch him get it. That's after the ball went in, but Charles Cherry had made a play move earlier to uh, get the get the uh, keep the ball alive. Brian Rousey fought for it, and then of course the foul was called. One official gave the sign right away that it was a bastard. Foul was evidently called on Byron Hopkins, his third. That not right now very relevant situation stands. The score tied at 65. Brian Rousey, a 75% free throw shooter, will be on the line. Bill, this is a point in the game where both coaches will keep their teams in the huddle just as long as they can until the officials bring them out. They don't have that ACC rule in the Colonial Athletic Association where you've got to be there in 15 seconds. Well, it's the rule that uh, myself and Jimmy Valvano love very much. Actually, Jimmy V doesn't care very much for us, but uh, I think it's a, it's a good rule, and certainly he's one of the folks that uh, supposedly voted for it. Well, anyway. Tom Yeager, the commissioner of the CAA, said he would like to see the conference adopted, but it was up to the athletic directors. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Brian Rousen will be at the free throw line. The score tied at 65. And he'll be shooting one. Brian Rousen, we said a 75% free throw shooter. Seahawks are going to take another timeout. Coach McPherson evidently saw something, and I think Coach Herman probably is going to be happy about it. Herman was yelling at his ball club. He was trying to get somebody's attention, telling him what he wanted to do. Well, it's very unusual that... Uh, it's very unusual that uh, a team would call a timeout with, their, uh, with a free throw shooter on the line and think you might ice him. But when you've got a senior like Brian Rouse and maybe you want to catch his breath, we got a chance. We may want to take a look at that uh, last scoring play. Um, Brian Rouse and fighting in the middle was somehow able to get the ball up against David Robinson twice. Now, the first time I thought he forced it. The second time. He did an excellent job of, of getting it back up. I tell you what, those 800 students that camped out have got their money's worth. They Here, were, here's that last shot. Mark Gary, who pulled down a long rebound, puts it back up. Now Brian Rouse down at number 25 gets it. Watch him take it right back up against Brian Hopkins. One of the keys is David Robinson is sealed off. Now he gets the good roll, and Hopkins uh, apparently called for reaching across. Brian Rousen's wrist. Now the referee who first signaled the shot good, but then was not sure and called the conference. Now they're going to give Brian Rousen one. I was wondering if uh, maybe he thought he was fouled after the shot and was going to give him two, but no, or one and one, but now he's just going to give him one. Robinson was trying to fight his way through the traffic in there to get, to get at Rousen to get that big long arm up. Look for UNCW after the made free throw to put some sort of pressure on Navy to get the clock down. Uh, Make David Robinson work away from the basket, I think, will be a key for them if they get the free throw. Just one shot. The senior gets the roll. 66-65 the score. Navy's having trouble getting the ball in bounds. Does the Wojcik. Five seconds left on the game clock. Jones crosses the line with three seconds. Three seconds to play. The Seahawks leading by one at 66-65. 
Well, there's this fellow in the middle there by the name of David Robinson who has broken all my career scoring marks at uh, Navy, or all the, the career scoring marks at Navy. It just had to, had to have gotten one bucket to break mine at Southview High School. But I think I would try to find some way to go into him. Other than that, Cliff Reese has heated up the second half. I try to get him loose on the corner. I tell you right now what I would uh, do if I was UNCW. We're looking right now at the Navy huddle and Coach Herman drawing up the play. If I were the Seahawks and Brian Rousen got the ball down, or check that, David Robinson got the ball down the paint, I might reach across there and foul him. He's tired at the end of the ball game. He is a clutch performer, but he's only shooting 64% from the line. Of course, you give him an opportunity to win the ball game from, from just 15 feet away with nobody in his face. Might look in here at Coach Herman's uh, board as he draws the play, see what, he, what he's planning to do. Three seconds. Bill Jensen got that shot. Three seconds left on the game clock, 66-65. UNCW with the, the lead, Navy with the ball. And the crowd going crazy. UNCW huddling. This may be the biggest win ever for the Seahawks if they can pull it off thus far. Uh, certainly would put them right back in the conference race. Before the second sellout in the history of Trash Coliseum, which opened in November of 1977. UNCW coming out in a man to man. Bobby Jones will be bringing the ball in right in front of us. Mark Gary on him. There's the pick at the top of the key. David Robinson for 15. And the ball game is over. And Navy wins it 67-66 on Robinson's shot. That is why David Robinson is the All-American. UNCW did exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to force him away from the basket. Let's take a look at that shot one more time. That was only Robinson's seventh point this half. Watch Cliff Reese and Byron, Hop or Byron Hopkins turn and set a pick on Brian Rousen. David Robinson will fight over the top of that pick. We can't see it just out of the screen. He fights over the top of it, shoots over Charles Cherry. Charles wisely not fouling him. David Robinson just sinks it. You hear so much about David Robinson, the, the fine touch he is, the, the clutch athlete he is, and he shows it all there on one play. Every, every bit of it. And around Trask Coliseum in some places, it's shocks of disbelief, uh, emotion, tears from many of the cheerleaders, the student section falling out. There's one thing. Everyone that saw this game saw one whale of a ball game. It was everything that anybody ever thought it would be. The teams that were ranked first and second preseason in the Colonial Athletic Association and decided, I guess as it should be, by probably the number one basketball player in the country. Well, one thing about it, at the other end, when uh, UNCW needed something big, they took it into Brian Rouse, and he got the three-point play. He did all that he could possibly do. Then you turn around at the other end, and you have David Robinson hitting the winning winning bucket. I guess that is about every way the script was written up prior to the game. It came true. A lot of the things that uh, folks expected to happen, happened. And when it comes down to it, you want uh, the ball in David Robinson's hand. They got it. We want the ball in Brian Robinson's hand, uh, Brian Rouse's hand. We got it there. And both gentlemen came through. The Seahawks did everything that Coach McPherson said they had to do. Uh, they had to stop the fast break. And for the most part, they did stop the fast break. Uh, they got intensity and got in on the boards, uh, but they lost it, fell one point short. We'll be back here live at Trask Coliseum uh, for some final post-game comments, but first we'll take this time off. Do you want to be a winner? Everyone wants to be a winner, but winning takes hard work and a lot of discipline. I know one thing. Drugs never made a winner out of anyone. They just make you a big loser. I've always said no to drugs. And I continue to say it every day of my life. Say no to drugs. After all, you can't be a hit when you're high.